Welcome to the Everyday Mindfulness Show, where we educate and inspire people to live fuller lives through mindful practices. Let's get started with your host, New York Times contributor, leadership advisor, sought-after keynote speaker, the author of the Amazon hot new release, Everyday Mindfulness from Chaos to Calm in a Crazy World. She's smart, strong, sassy, and a trendsetter in the field of mindful leadership. Your host, Holly Duckworth. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Everyday Mindfulness Show, where we talk to real people about what it, li- what it means to live and lead mindful lives. And it is a great privilege to introduce you to a CSP, a Certified Speaking Professional, And that is the highest designation awarded by the National Speakers Association. This is my dear friend, someone that I have come to respect for her courage, her bravery, and her commitment to making gratitude matter in associations, corporations, and organizations. This is my friend, Lisa Ryan, CSP. Welcome to the show. (laughs) Thank you. It's nice that I have a new last name. Now it's Ryan, CSP. (laughs) There you go. There you have it. And for people who aren't familiar, you know, in most professions, there is is, is an earned designation. Lisa didn't just have this handed to her. She spent more than five years tracking every speech, every engagement, making sure the income was right and the protections. And she had to meet financial thresholds every year. And she did it with a topic that I I told her before we hit record on the show, I never thought she could sell. (laughs) And and that makes her even stronger. I never told her that then, but I get to tell her that live here on the show, gratitude. She came to me, she says, Holly, I'm going to teach gratitude worldwide. I'm like, yeah, good luck with that sister. And she did it. And she's earned the highest designations in the world. And that's, that's mindful awareness. Lisa, you, I, I, you, I love the way you said it. Uh, your full-time job left you and you had the opportunity to open a whole new door. And that, that's a, I call it a pause point. It's a mindful moment. So what does mindfulness mean to you? And how did you turn that bump in the road into a gratitude success strategy that's <laughs> moved you forward? Well, the funny thing is I had been doing a gratitude practice for about a year before I, I my job left me. I was uh, in medical sales and I was starting a gratitude journal with some friends. And it was just something we did. We held each other accountable. I mean, it was, it was good. And then on October 12th, 2010, when my position was eliminated via group conference call with 12 of us getting canned at the same time, you know, it was, it was a scary experience. I mean, I woke up with a job and by lunchtime, I no longer had one. But I went back to that gratitude practice and in the midst of shaking and crying and being scared and not knowing what I was going to do with my life, I sat down and I did some deep breathing and I kind of went inside and asked myself, okay, what can I find to be grateful for in this situation? And the funny thing is my goal list popped into my head, this little piece of paper from 1989. It had about 80 different items on it. The first one was to buy a house. Okay, check, I had done that. The second one was to become a professional speaker. And the third one was to write a book. Wow. So it was almost at that moment that this physical weight lifted off my shoulders because I knew that goals that had been on my list for more than 20 years could come to fruition. So when it comes to mindfulness, even when your world is crashing down around you, when you can give yourself the gift of just those couple minutes to go inside and to ask yourself questions, like in my case, what can I find to be grateful for? It works, it brings us back to center. And you know, nine years later, full time, it's still, it's my year's getting better and better every day. (laughs) So, Well, that's what I've been hearing. The more interviews I've been doing on the show is no matter if you choose one practice and you're doing it daily, or you you've got maybe a, a, a library of mindfulness practices, the power of it growing over time. There's often, I think, a misnomer about mindfulness. Mindfulness is meditation, and I've got to go sit on a yoga mat for 20 minutes. And it even, I mean, it even says on my back, at the back of my book, no yoga mat needed. Your practice, your gratitude practice is something that can be practiced personally, 
it can be practiced professionally and it takes like two minutes or less. Right. And that's what I encourage my clients to do, because even though when I'm working with associations or working with businesses, it's employee engagement, but it has to start with that practice of gratitude, because otherwise it's just something that you do to somebody else, where when we can find gratitude, when we can look at our lives and find the good in it, it's much easier to take that more grateful person into the workplace and to start to change the culture to one that's more positive. Well, and that's where I think our work does have a little bit of an intersection that I like to highlight is the idea of authenticity, that it's unfortunately in our world that everybody can twist everything to the negative. Oh my gosh, it's just another Hallmark holiday. Oh my gosh, this Thanksgiving thing. I've just got to go buy more cards and spend more money. And oh my God, I have to gather my family together. But what I love about your work is you highlight the power of, this has to be real. This has to be authentic. Right. And that's what I say. It's like, it's not, I'm not tell, going out and telling people to just slap a happy face on and pretend that, you know, everything's happy, happy, joy, joy, because, you know, it's not. We get depressed and we get frustrated and we get angry and all of these negative emotions. But the point being is to feel the depth of whatever that anger is and then when you get out of the rawness of that emotion to be able to say, okay, what can I find that's good in this situation? In my case, I'll ask myself, well, I'm going to laugh about this at some point, so why not now? <laughs> you know? And just look for the good in those situations. And, and when you look for them, that's the thing. You can always find them. Oh my gosh, I love that. I'm going to laugh about this someday, so why not now? <laughs> I just had to buy a new car, and I bought a brand new Mercedes. And obviously, this is a very expensive luxury car. And yet, this whole Mercedes thing isn't exactly working out for me because I wanted a car with ski racks. I live in Denver, Colorado. I am the only woman in the world that is a little peeved off about buying a Mercedes that doesn't work. And the whole time I'm driving back for the third time from the dealership trying to work out this, this whole thing, I'm like, okay, how do I be grateful about this thing? How do I be grateful about this? And it is, I mean, like, I will laugh about this a year from now when mm -hmm. I'm driving down either with a totally different car with ski racks or bike racks or whatever. But I, I kind of had that moment of, okay, really, first world problem. I'm going to laugh in a year. How do, I, how do I make that that a now moment? So thank you for, for inviting me to that laughter now because it is – sometimes our only defense mechanism. Right, absolutely. So I'm excited to see more gratitude practices coming into meetings and conferences. I recently attended a workshop where the day actually started and everybody went around the room and said one thing they were grateful for. I'm curious, I'm sure you've seen this activity. What are the things you hear most that we have in common? Because I think in a world right now we're whipped up in otherness. Gratitude's a place where we can connect in sameness. People, it always comes down to friends, health, family, education, um, the things that we have. Um, I always ask people when I do these activities in my programs, you know, were there any surprises? And it wasn't necessarily surprises, but when you can take a moment and you only have three things, I'm going to think of three things that I'm grateful for today, what comes up? a lot of times is the surprise because you know what? It's like, I really didn't think about that, but it, it's like when you have that focused attention on something good. And then when I have people in the room share one thing from their list, well, they can do it in one of two ways. They can either share something from their list or if that's private, they can share what it felt like to take a minute to just you know, focus on something good. And the energy in the room is multiplied exponentially. I mean, people are laughing and smiling because these are conversations that we don't normally have. We don't take time out of our day in regular conversation to say, you know, this is something I'm grateful for. This is something the good that happened to me. Why are we so focused on that whole misery loves company thing that if we find enough bad things to whine about, then we can get that whole negative spiral going why not just be grateful? Well, and that's when I've seen this activity. I love the same, same of it. You know, it is that my wife, my husband, my, my daughter, my education, those types of things. 
they, they bring the human back to a world that is often all about doing. And it's just so important right now. Yeah, and it's and the other thing too, the other caveat or disclaimer that I put on it is that it doesn't have to be something big. Uh, you know, it, it's like people think about gratitude and it has to be, oh, I won the lottery. Oh, I met the love of my life. Oh, you know, all of these things. But sometimes it's just, I have running water. I have flushing toilets. I have reliable transportation. I have a warm bed. When we can start with the very basics, the things that we most often take for granted, then when things do take a turn for the worse, it's much easier for us to, to have that automatic response. Now, I've read lots of studies on the power of gratitude, and I have not used myself as a subject of scientific study, and I know that in the 10 years that I have been doing my gratitude practice, I have rewired my brain because it almost becomes a first response of what can, how can I find the good? What can I find to be grateful for? Do I still have bad days? Absolutely. But they don't last nearly as long as they used to because my brain works in a different way now. So that gratitude practice, your personal practice, is that like a journaling thing every day or how, what is that for you? Yeah, I have two, um, sometimes three, <laughs> but um, the morning journal, the, the two of them are the morning journal and the evening journal. So the morning journal, first thing in the morning, I reach under my bed, I take out my journal, I write down five things that I'm grateful for and try to add some detail to them. It's five sentences. And like you said, it takes less than a minute to do. But the nice thing about the morning journal is that I can be grateful in advance of things happening. If I'm doing a speech that day, I will write down, I'm so grateful I rocked the presentation at this particular organization. So it sets that positive expectation. And then a lot of times the second gratitude practice that I use regularly, primarily because otherwise I suffer from insomnia, I call the ABCs of gratitude, where I pick a random letter in the alphabet and I just, instead of letting those voices remind me of all the things that I didn't get done and all the things that I need to do, I'll take a random letter and say, you know what, I'm, okay, I'll start with H. I'm so grateful for my interview with Holly today. I am grateful for ice cream. That's really the only thing that I ever am grateful for, for the letter I. J, I'm grateful for, you know, my friend Jack, whatever it is. But what that practice does is it gives your brain, your monkey mind, something to do to focus on in alphabetical order. And usually it's five or six letters before I'm asleep. Now, sometimes I'll go through the alphabet, you know, twice. <laughs> but for the most part, it's a practice that really does help. Um, and then, you know, you think about it, you're putting positive thoughts into your mind right before you go to sleep. And they're all thoughts of gratitude. Oh my gosh, I ab absolutely love that. And, you know, we're going to take a short break. And before the break, we always invite somebody to, to have a question. And I I'm, I'm actually going to hijack your question, I think, which is I'm going to invite listeners on the show to say, as we're in the holiday season, this show is going to be out in November. What can you be thankful for in advance as the holiday season takes forth? What do you, what do you think of that question, Lisa? What can we be I grateful for? I think that's an advance? awesome question. Usually, I, like I said, I do that in the morning, but I love setting that positive expectation for the entire holiday season. I think it's a great question. I can't wait to hear the answers. Awesome. Well, we're, we'll be right back after a short break. The Everyday Mindfulness Show is brought to you by Leadership Solutions International. Are you hosting an upcoming conference or convention? Or looking for a speaker to provide inspiration and motivation? Would you like your audiences to know what you know as a listener of the Everyday Mindfulness Show? Check out Leadership Solutions International for more on mindful leadership keynote offerings, on-site mindfulness information centers, and trainings. Welcome back to the Everyday Mindfulness Show. We are talking to Lisa Ryan about your gratitude, your, your gratitude strategy. And before the break, we invited you to say what you are thankful for in advance. And I, I know this is a powerful tool because I use it. 
And I want to invite another one, Lisa. I don't know if you, you do this, but this is one of my, my strategies. I think if gratitude's great in a gratitude journal, which it is, um, I love to take those things and when possible, I write one handwritten thank you note every single day. And there's some things about writing a thank you note that sometimes makes people a little nervous. Oh my gosh, Holly, it has to be too long. Oh my God, I have to have stamps. Oh my gosh, it's going to take forever. It's really not that hard, people. I have one three by five postcard. Okay, it, it is branded with my logo on it. But I mean, you can go buy these things at a you know, 99 cent store. And I take one of those that I write every day and I will actually acknowledge that person. Hey, Pam, thank you so much for doing a great job with my hair today. It really, make, really makes me feel great and empowered when I'm on the show. Three sentences. Thank you, Holly. And I just keep stamps on in the mail. And I get more compliments about that example that I can set in an easy way that magnifies the good, not just my journal, but out into the world. Yeah. I actually have a client of mine and uh, that how she does it, because I send handwritten thank you notes all the time. And I also use send out cards because I like being able Beautiful. to take a picture of myself with my client and then uploading it to a card and, you know, thanking them that way. And I have my own handwriting font. So it looks like, <laughs> actually, it's on a side note for that. Uh, my mother-in-law said one time, because uh, when she got a send out card, she's like, your writing is so <laughs> nice. I don't think that she realized I was typing the font. But anyway, that's beside the point. So when I talk about gratitude practices and in a lot of my programs, I actually give people thank you notes to write, to think about something that they need to thank uh, and then send that off. And the, a lot of times it's like, but my handwriting's horrible. And I just say, get over yourself and write the note. It doesn't have to be long or mushy. Uh, but my client, what she does is she buys a sheet of stamps every week, every month. And her goal is to get rid of those 16 or 20 stamps or whatever is on that sheet, um, because that way physically she can see how many thank you notes that she sent. And I thought that's a, another great practice and, and great reminder to do that. Oh, Lisa, I love, I love that. You know, overcoming some of the objections to this gratitude thing can be so key. I get the handwriting thing too. Every once in a while I go home for a holiday and people, well, I've got your note, but we couldn't read it. I'm like, well, they know I love them. You know, it's, all, it's, it's all, it's all, you know, sometimes it's not even about the words. It's just the recognition that you thought of them. And I, I do think technology is a thing here. We started the show with the, the power of authenticity. This, this gratitude strategy, personally and professionally, only grows and goes if you do it in the way that works for you. So if you are an emailer, you're a Facebooker, you're a tweeter, you're an Instagram photo person, just do it. <laughs> do it the way you want to do it. You yep. can't do it wrong. <laughs> yep. Do something. Do something. So talk to us about this in corporate America. I know you are an engagement leadership motivational specialist. Um, how can we use this now at the holidays, especially in year end, um, as a small business or corporate strategy that goes beyond just like giving the turkey or the Christmas tree? Yeah. Well, first of all, it's something to, it's a great practice to start over the holidays, but it doesn't end at the end of the holidays. <laughs> These are practices that we can look to do year round because gratitude counts year round. Um, but when it comes to those, you know, finding a formal practice, finding something that you can do just little steps at a time um, in corporate America, you know, I talk about, again, I talk about employee engagement. And when I first started that, you know, I have, you have a lot of managers that say, well, why should I thank my employees for doing a jo their job? I mean, that's what they get paid for. And it's like, yeah, but if you thank them, they would give you so much more. But if that manager, for whatever reason, is unable to find the good in their own lives, or you have an employee that maybe is going through a rough time or whatever, these are practices that they start with the whole person. They, they take care of us holistically, where if I 
um, am able to find things in my life that I'm grateful for. And now I feel better health wise because there's tons of studies out there that show the benefits of gratitude with health. And then my relationships at home are better and stronger with my family, with my spouse, with my friends. Then I am able to take that more positive person into the workplace. So we start with the self, and that's what I refer to in one of my books. My first book, The Upside of Down Times, um, is my show practice. So I'm an acronym girl. The S is the, 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 S is the self, because it doesn't really start to change our perspective. The H is the health benefits of so stress levels, heart, immune system, better sleep. All of these make us feel better physically. The O being relationship with others, again, and that's both the people at home who love us and then taking that into the workplace. And then the W is wealth. So depending on the audience, that could be personal abundance and prosperity, or that's also how we take it into the other W, the workplace. And I have a whole nother program, my thanks program for that. But it really, you know, when we can get to that foundation first, that how do you start your meetings on a positive note? How do you encourage peer-to-peer -peer recognition? How do you acknowledge your employees in the moment when they've done something well? Catching them doing things well instead of always trying to fix what's broken. That's where gratitude starts and that's why it works so well in the workplace. Well, I'm so proud of you figuring out how to do this with head, with heart, with science, and with your own authenticity. Now, as somebody who gives out so much gratitude and thanks and giving out into the world, I'm going to ask you a fun question because I think gratitude is also a way we can leave a heart mark on somebody. Do you have a, an example of somebody who's maybe said or done something in gratitude back to you that made a difference in your world? Oh, boy. You See, it's fun, to, it's fun to flip these questions. You know, yeah. as speakers, authors, and experts, we often are so focused on giving out, but yet that everything that we give out, we must also be willing, willing to receive. Yeah, well, I get the joy every Thursday, actually. I have a, um, a note that goes out to my list. It's Gratitude Thought of the Week. It's been coming out every week since 2011. And this is, it's short, it's black and white text only, it takes less than two minutes to read. Um, and it's usually just, there's a, you know, a quote, a story, a lesson, an action. It's just short. And I write it in the moment. Um, you know, usually like today I said, oh, gratitude thoughts of week tomorrow, what is tomorrow? What do I want to write about? So it's real, it's raw. And I just put it out there and I, I don't sell on it. I get really, you know, nothing for doing it. It's not a newsletter or anything. But the responses that I get every single week about what, you know, people share their stories with me, um, people share what has happened in their life. They, they you know, uh, at least once a week I get, this, this is exactly what I'm going through. How did you know that I needed to hear this message today? And that's the gift that I have the privilege of getting every week from, you know, subscribers and, and readers of that gratitude thought of the week, because I know that it works when you work it. And the people that take the time to even give some thought, to take some action, to reach out, to connect with somebody they haven't seen for a while, or, or maybe a difficult relationship that they want, that they have the desire to heal, those little reminders work and that it makes my day every Thursday. I look forward to, to hearing um, from people and seeing the results that they're getting. Well, and that's what we, we need to remember in this, this time of, of the holidays is there is no giving without the equal and opposite receiving. And so we're so grateful that you have been willing to come on the show, share with us your strategies, the show strategy. And um, if people want to get more Lisa Ryan and maybe even get that thought of the day, where can they go to get that information? Um, they can go to my website, lisaryanspeaks.com. L-I-S-A, Ryan is R-Y-A-N, speaks.com. Um, they can also send me an email to lisa at gratigy, which is G-R-A-T-E-G-Y. But I believe you can sign up right on the website there. So 
You That's can. I did this morning. You absolutely Yay. can. I, it, and it's easy to find. We're going to include those links in the show notes. Any last minute words of wisdom as we set anticipatory gratitude into the field for this holiday, Lisa? Gratitude is very easy to do. It's also easy not to do. So challenge yourself for those 30 days over the holidays to write down three to five things every day that you're grateful for. And I promise you at the end of that first month, you're going to want to continue because it works. Well, remember, mindful matters and so do you. Have a great holiday season. Thank you for joining us for today's show. For more mindfulness every day, visit everydaymindfulnessshow.com and download the three-day challenge and experience the ABCs of mindfulness. Mm-hmm.